Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 44 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I possibly get to the bottom of my fish's symptoms. Take a look at how the common carp continues to welcome the crucians to the pond and trim back the marginal plants. Against all my expectations, my subscriber count continues to grow and I couldn't be more thankful to everyone who watches my videos and then decides to sign up and come back for more. Mine is not the biggest of YouTube pond keeping channels and my pond and fish are slightly niche in a world of koi and rotary drum filters and viewing windows. So I'm even more appreciative that at least 100 people come and take a peek at my videos every week and sometimes almost a thousand do. So, if you enjoy this episode, do the subscribe and like thing, or don't. Just watch and enjoy, and there'll be another episode waiting for you next week if you choose to come back. Right, let's get started. In last week's episode, I talked about my suspicions that the fish had some problems, potentially a parasite infection. My suspicions were raised due to the scratches on their sides and some lost scales, probably from flashing, and the sound of them jumping, well, technically landing back in the water, something that they last did when they had a parasite problem back in 2019. So, my first job was to confirm that they were actually flashing and jumping, with my GoPro being temperamental and some 12 hour working days this week, I turned to my CCTV to watch the fish for me. I set it to watch the pond 24 hours a day and alert me with the smallest of movements. I left this running for six days, so for 144 hours. At night, I'd be unlikely to see flashing, but could obviously see jumping. During the day, especially when the sun was out, the CCTV would pick up any movement even down at the bottom of the pond. So, two or three times a day, I checked through the alerts and the brief video clips that had been saved, and it had saved a lot, because a tiny amount of movement in the frame would set it off, and a lot of different things were seen as movement. So, the wind blowing spider webs by the camera set it off. Spiders on the edge of the frame set it off. The rod just swimming around at the surface set it off. Things I couldn't even see set it off. And the carp also regularly set it off, but mainly when they were just living their fishy life, swimming casually and generally looking okay. But, they have those marks that would indicate flashing, so they've been doing something. Plus, we definitely heard them jump and splash, so they are also doing that. And I knew that the CCTV wasn't perfect. It clearly missed some quite big movements that I'd seen. For example, the fish feeding off the surface. So I felt I needed to give it longer. And then, finally, eventually, captured this. 
both carp, first the common, then the mirror, definitely flashing. But that was only once, over five days, and even with some margin of error with the imperfect CCTV, they didn't seem to be doing it a lot. In addition, I've seen them doing it after feeding copiously from the bottom of the pond. It's a slower, more gentle flick, however, but definitely a known behaviour that I don't think is connected to parasites. However, they hadn't been fed before the CCTV captured this, although I guess they may still have been sifting through detritus, as they're constantly after food after all. Additionally, they are jumping, although for some reason the CCTV hasn't caught it, and they've only ever done it repeatedly in the past when they've had a parasitic infection. So, on balance, I decided to treat them, which is where it gets tricky, and I somewhat deviate from best practice. The first thing to do when your fish are showing signs of ill health is to test the water. Now, I've been doing this regularly and it's pretty much perfect, so no worries there. The second is to look at their presentation and symptoms and see what that might indicate. My carp, and it is only the carp, are flashing and jumping. They're not showing any other symptoms though. They're really active, no clamped fins, eating really well, so it all points to a parasite that's irritating them but not, as yet, causing them any more serious problems. The third thing you should do is to scrape some mucus from their skin and look at it under a microscope to see what, if any, parasites are present. And this is where I deviate from best practice. I don't have a microscope, but obviously I should consider getting one to better look after my fish. Although, the purpose of having it is to identify the problem, which would then inform your treatment options. However, with my fish, anti-parasite treatment options are really quite limited. Both rud and tench are contraindicated for most treatments. In fact, there's only one that I could find that was safe for them, Blagdon anti-parasite treatment, which I in fact used successfully in 2019. There may be others, as I can't claim to know all of them. Therefore, I bought some more of it and treated the pond. I timed it with a five day period off work, which will be helpful to keep an eye on the fish. No problem so far though, and I'll update more next week. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I've been observing my common carp chasing and bullying the crucians. Again, GoPro issues mean I haven't got to film much more of it, but it's been happening a lot. Additionally, three of the crucians have appeared increasingly less confident, spending more time laying by the pipework. My concern obviously is that they'll become really stressed, affecting their feeding and health, and possibly getting injured. So, my options. The priority is obviously the welfare of the fish, so it may well be necessary to home them elsewhere, and I may have a good option for that. I'm going to give it time though. Things may settle down, and anyway, I'd prefer to finish the current treatment before moving them to someone else's pond. If necessary though, and although it will be disappointing to have to do it, if it's for the best for them, I will move them on. I really like the marginal plants. It's not really a knowledge base informing the types, arrangement or care I give them, but I like the greenery around the pond and the irises flower most years. They're all fairly bulletproof really as well, which helps, although the ones at the rear by the walled area aren't particularly thriving so far this year. The only problem with them is that they grow far too tall for the pond and if left unchecked like last year, begin to engulf the surface of the water. To prevent that and reduce the height, I'm going to complete regular trimming. It's difficult as I've really not got any idea how to do it neatly or in a way to give a natural effect. My aim therefore is to keep the plants roughly at the height of the heron fence, but only cut back some of them each time to prevent them from looking too uniform and to hide my unsophisticated chopping.
I think the end result isn't too bad. The irises are the hardest to cut and keep looking good, as I don't really know how to trim them and retain their natural shape. Maybe it's not possible. Anyway, I'm going to keep at it during the year and try not to let it look too rough or alternatively too overgrown. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. In next week's episode, I'll show you the progress of the treatment and how the crucians are getting on. Hopefully both will have developed positively. I'm also hoping that the GoPro will also have a positive week as I really want to get filming underwater again. We'll see. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.